Hey everybody, it's Natalie with Treasures of Mini, and this is the card we're going to make today using the June Simon Says Stamp Card Kit of the month. And we're also going to use some Distress Oxide inks. So I'm that was the stamp set from Simon Says Stamp, but I'm also going to use this little pot from a Hero Arts stamp set. So I stamped both images on some Bristol Strathmore cardstock, and I have picked three greens, a, a light one, dark one, and darker one. <laughs> from my Zig Real Clean Color Markers, and we're going to be doing some watercolor. So I'm first going to lay down the lightest shade of green, and then with a damp brush, I'm going to kind of move the pigment out and end up coloring the entire leaf in. And then from there, I'm going to grab the middle tone green, and I'm going to lay down a little of that towards the um, edges, the, inter, the center edges of the leaves, and then I'm going to, with a damp brush, pull that color out a little bit as well. So you can see that's what I'm doing here. Now, it only takes a small amount. These are very pigmented. They're very movable with a damp brush, so you don't need to put a lot. I'm just kind of putting it to make shading and to give some different dimension and make it more realistic. The third color that I'm going to pick is more of like an aqua. It's still green, but it has more blue in it. And... It's also a little bit darker, so it's going to give a little bit more depth, but it's, I feel like it's going to make it look a little more, more realistic because you have more different shades of greens. So since this is mainly about the oxide technique that I'm going to do on the back, I'm only going to show parts of this coloring. I do the exact same process with the other small greenery leaves on the other side. Um, but I am going to show you how I do the... I do the four bigger leaves on top a little different. I add a yellow to them. But anyway, you can see how I'm just barely pulling out the color with a very damp brush. This is not very wet at all. Um, and it moves so easily. You just kind of have to judge your dampness and just play with it. But I've done lots of videos with this. And if you want to know my colors more in depth, just leave me a comment at below and I can do that. So I wanted to add some yellow on these bigger leaves, so I'm just randomly scrib scribbling some yellow into the center parts of the leaves. And then with the exact same three greens that I used below, I'm going to do the exact same process with the bigger leaves. Only I'm going to try to leave some of the green in the middle. So again, this is not a very wet brush, it's very damp, and I'm just going to move it across and try to leave that yellow center. This little spot right here kind of confuses me on the stamp set. I'm not really sure if that's supposed to be another flower or part of the leaf. I just go ahead and make it part of the leaf and just kind of cover it up with the darker colors. But you can see how I'm just gradually pulling the color out. And I'm using those exact same three colors. Now you're going to see in the next shot that the three bigger ones are already done because I, I did it all the same and I move on to one of the little orange, yellow orange flowers that I do. This just came out so pretty though. But as you can see here, I'm doing the same process. I picked a yellow, an orange, and a red for this little flower and I'm just moving my yellow around and then I'm going to come in with the orange. This is where you can see how pigmented this is. I haven't put down very much orange, but when I come back in with the damp brush, it pretty much overtakes it. I mean, it, it pretty much makes the whole thing orange, which is fine. I just went with it. But you'll see in a second, I ended up getting the yellow back out. And the one thing I love about these is you can push the pigment around. You can move it. So you can see here... I'm starting on the outer petal, and I'm just, with circular motions, just pushing that orange back towards the center, and it, it does move, and I love that about these. Now, I mean, it didn't get me the true yellow back, but it did make it to where there was a difference. Now, in a second, I'm going, with a damp brush, I'm going to add some red, and because this is so small, I actually just scribbled a little bit of the red on my craft mat, and then with my paintbrush, I just did like some little lines. I'm not blending this in. I'm just doing some quick little lines. So I did the same process with that other little yellowy orange flower. For these, 
I don't know if these are buds of a flower or if they're like little berries. I feel like they're berries. I don't know. They just look like berries to me. So I'm choosing two shades of purple here. And I end up having to do this process twice because I just, I kind of lost some of my difference in shading. So, and I pick the side that I want to be the lightest. So to me, my light is coming, uh, the lightest side is where, blech, sorry guys. The lighter side's where the light is shining and the darker side is where it would be in the shadow. Now you can see it moves so much that I kind of start to lose that definition of the two. And I really did kind of want it to be a harsh shadow, like it's a round, berry, hard object. So I go back in and I just do the same process. I add that lighter purple and then I come in with the darker one. Only this time I don't really move it a whole lot with a paintbrush. I just kind of, because it's still kind of wet, so I'm just barely dabbing it. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now for these little red flowers, I just scribbled some red down on my craft mat again and painted them in with my paintbrush. Now for the roses, I chose a two shades of a red, a dark one and a light one. And the darker shade, I do these little, I don't know what to call them. I guess they're like separate little petals. I do them with the darker shade. And I also do the center of the rose with that same darker shade, which you'll see here, I actually forgot. And you'll see me get out my lighter uh, marker here. Now, I want the rose to appear darker in the center and move out to a lighter color. So this lighter red, I'm only putting in the center, and then I'm gonna pull it out with my paintbrush, but right here I realized I forgot to do the center, so I hope this is not too confusing. I went back to my darker red and colored in the center, and then I come with my paintbrush, and there's nothing on this paintbrush but damp water, it's just damp, and you can tell that I'm picking up color from that center and just slowly, bringing it out. So it's like a gradation. Like here I'm picking some up and then I'm gonna put it down here on this little spot. So it makes it look like it's darker in the center and it comes out to lighter petals. So this one I actually do in order correctly and I think you can understand it a little bit better, but I picked two pinks, a darker and a lighter. And then I just did it with the same process that I did the other roses. So when I'm done with this, then I'm going to color the little um, like pot up there um, right here. So I picked two blues and honestly, I thought that there was a big difference, a darker and a lighter, but it turns out there really wasn't that much difference. Um, I guess if I redid it, maybe I would, would pick one with a little further uh, color value well, a different color value change. Oh my goodness. I'm having so much trouble, guys. <laughs> anyway, with a very wet brush, you can see I'm having to re-dip my brush a lot. I probably really could have used a bigger brush, but this is what I already had out. I am just moving that pigment around, and then this is the lighter one, and I'm going to go back in and add um, some more pigment down. But since it's such a large area, I'm actually gonna like add a lot more and then again, come back in with a pretty wet brush and kind of move that around. I wanna keep the center of it the lightest part to kind of show that it's, it's kind of round-ish, I guess you could say. But anyway, um, I am going to fussy cut both of these out because that's I'm going to be putting them on top of a background that we're gonna make using Distress Oxide inks. <coughs> Sorry. So, anyway, this is the last card that I'm going to be making from the Simon Says Set June card kit. Um, I have already ordered my July one and it should be coming in next week, but I also ordered another new uh, card kit monthly subscription that I'm very, very, very excited about that I will also be sharing with you as soon as I get it. And I'm going to be doing a giveaway from it as well. So, but that'll be a surprise. You'll have to wait and catch me next week so you can see that. 
but anyway, so we are going to, I colored all the little centers uh, with a black jelly roll pin of the flowers, all the little white spots, and here it is all done. So now I'm just going to take my scissors and I'm going to fussy cut. And as you can see right here, you can see where the stems are. I didn't cut all the way to the stem because it would just be too tiny. I took a black marker and kind of filled in that area. And I did the same thing behind the little red flowers. So now for our background, we're going to set our two elements aside. And on some photo glossy paper, and I'm using... Um, the HP brand, we are going to take out our Distress Oxide inks and I'm gonna, sm I smushed it down onto my work surface. This is just an laminated white piece of paper and then I sprayed it with my wet bottle or my water bottle and then I'm just laying it in it. And I, ha I ran out of ink so I like did it twice. And then I'm going to dry it before I move on to my next color. Now you wanna work from your lightest color to your darkest color and you put a little bit less on each time. So I dried that fossilized amber layer first and then I put down some cracked pistachio and I'm drying it with my heat tool and then I've moved on to broken china. And you can see I actually put a lot of the broken china right there and I didn't mean to get that much because you want to be able to see your layers because these are very opaque so you cover it up and you want to still be able to see it peeking through. Here I dropped some little water droplets on it and I'm blotting it up with a paper towel just to see what it would do and it really didn't do anything on photo paper but if you do that on cardstock it's really cool. So I decided I wanted a few little dark areas so with some ice spruce I did um, pick up just some dark areas but it's, I, it's not real thick there's not a lot of it. So I also decided I wanted some splatter marks with it. So I just got an acrylic block and a very wet paintbrush and just kind of made a mixture. And then you can see I'm like just flicking it everywhere and it made a mess, but it's still pretty. And then with a very uh, light, it's not very wet. This is just kind of dried out baby wipe. You wipe it off and look at what you get. It's so pretty. And this is how it's going to be on the card base. So I'm just going ahead and letting you see that. Now, this is the way I want it. And I really liked that blue paper in the back, but I was out of it. All I had left was some strips. So that's why you saw that I just put some strips around the edge. And then I popped up my background piece with some foam tape. And no one will ever know that's not a whole piece. So it's a good way to use your scraps. Now for these two elements, I am just going to glue them straight onto my background piece with some Tombow Mono. And then I stamped congratulations in the pink oxide. I can't remember the name of it, but it was the oxide ink. And I popped it up on some dimensionals as well. And this is a jelly roll pen and it's just a glaze. It's a clear color, but I really like it because you can go right over your lettering and it's kind of like glossy accents, but it's not like near as thick. And speaking of glossy accents, I used my glossy accents to fill in all the black areas of the flowers. And I also did the purple little like berry things. So here's our card today. And I hope you guys really enjoyed it. And I really hope you give this Distress Oxide ink technique a try. I have really enjoyed using it to make beautiful shiny backgrounds that almost look like you printed it on photo paper, but you actually made it. So please give me a thumbs up and hit subscribe if you liked and check the little bell so you'll get a notification every time I post a new video. And until next time, hugs and loves from my craft room to yours. Bye.